Blog Talk Radio. You are now tuned into the best, best, best fatherhood radio show in the world. Furthering Fathering Radio Show. It's the Furthering Fathering Radio Show. The, the, the brothers are back in the building. Brother J in NYC and Brother L in the ATL. The, the, the Furthering Fathering Radio Show starts in five. Four, three, two, one. You ready? L- l- let's get the conversation started. I emphasize that if anyone is listening to this as a replay or listening to it live, connect with further and fathering. You will be encouraged. You will be edified. The 20, 30 minutes that we're on the radio chopping it up is nothing compared to the energy and the strength you will receive from men who love you just because you're a man. And then as they get to know you, they speak life to you, they challenge you, they affirm you, and they enable you to be powerful where you're needed, which is with your family. Brother Derek, you're saying hello. It's not only uh, only, uh, good for the child, but I think it's a mandate from God. Um, I think the heart of the Father belongs to men. And God has called us to be that for as many children as we can. So I don't really echo everything you said. I'm, I'm, I'm fully on board with that. And I think um, the call is for more men to embrace that truth so that we can begin to rebuild our community, our nation, one family at a time. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Further and Father radio show as my head still bops to the beat. My brother Jay Matrix made many moons ago. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I'm excited to be alive. Today, October 29th, 2019. And the topic for today is, and it's a repeat, well not a repeat, but a continuation. Um... Ten things to tell your teenage daughter, part two, um, the Furthering Father and Radio Show. Um, I am your host, uh, Jeremy Maynard, Minister Jeremy Maynard, and uh, my best friend who's uh, in the midst of doing so many fatherhood things in Georgia will not be on the show tonight, but, 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 uh, we have many, many calling guests that, uh, that will bless your ears, bless your hearts, bless your minds with wisdom. Um, so, but how we normally start and how we always start is we want to give honor to our, our Heavenly Father who um, who is furthering fathering. Um, and since we're talking about ten things we want to talk to about our daughters, we want our daughters to operate in virtue. When we left off the last time, we talked about the, the three V's, um, values, uh, virtue, and virginity. And we're going to start off at that point. So I'm going to talk about the virtual woman, uh, the the virtuous woman, uh, Proverbs 31, verse 10. Uh, sorry, verse 10 to, to 12 in the Amplified, and it reads, "An excellent woman, one who is spiritual, capable, intelligent, and virtuous. Who is he who can find her?" Her value is more precious than jewels, and her net worth is far above rubies and pearls. The heart of her husband trusts in her with secure confidence, and he will have no lack of gain. She comforts, encourages, and does him only good and not evil all the days of her life. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the voice of the Father and the echo and resonance of your voice through fathers to their daughters. It is true as you as you spoke through our brother Colin Pickney that our daughters will be the ones who pick the next generation of fathers. They choose to whom they will be vulnerable to. 
Help us, Lord, as fathers, whether we're fathers of sons or fathers of daughters, when we see the young teenage uh, sister in and in our sphere, help us to have a word in season, a seed to plant in our heart and mind that will empower, affirm, and encourage her. Bless this show as we as uh, it's broadcast globally. That this is not just a local thing, but let dads globally speak into their teenage daughters the wisdom, the power, the love, and the sound mind that overcomes the fear which God has not given us. Bless us, Lord, to walk confident in you so that when we confide in you, we have that strength from your joy, for your joy is our strength. We thank you for this time together on this show, this incredible Furthering Father and Radio show. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So. Um, a quick run run back Since we did uh, Ten things to tell your teenage daughter Two weeks ago And we really only got through the first three on a, In a solid way I'm going to read those back to you The first one is Tell your teenage daughter I love you Unconditionally When you love unconditionally You don't love if they do If they meet a certain standard No matter where they are uh, No matter what they've done the communication from father to daughter is, I love you, no matter what. Next, you create the open avenue of communication. You tell her, you can tell me anything respectfully. But you have to put respectfully on the end so that the, the, the proper paradigm, the proper honor, is in the or in the words that are received. You want to 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 be able to call be called on the carpet, but it should always be done with honor and respect. But not just called on the carpet, so that they can express their heart uh, in a quality manner, and not succumb to uh, uh, what what the what the word calls um, babblings. Um, of vain babblings um, They lead to more unrighteousness So you want you want your, your daughter to speak respectfully uh, And then the three V's You want her to protect the three V's Protect her virtue Don't do anything that will uh, mess up her uh, uh, Her reputation as a virtuous woman uh, uh, Do not do anything that will Cause her to, to seem dishonest, a manipulative, a, a troublemaker. Uh, um, you want her to uphold the values, the values that God has given, the values that the family uh, stands for, the, the, the value that the community needs. Um, you want to be clear, to communicate that. Uh, uh, you want your daughter to be a woman of virtue, even as a young teenage Girl, you wanted to, to, to let them know that that is. You want to speak the end from the beginning, so you want you say, I, I I know you're going to be. I expect you to be. I pray for you to be. I hope for you to be a virtuous woman. And and, and uh, uh, where, where virginity is concerned, uh, during last week's show, where we talked about things you have to talk to your teen about. Uh, a poignant what point was brought up um, where you do not want to seem hypocritical, but it's not hypocritical. There is no wrong time to tell your child to do the right thing. It's in the manner in which you do it. You do not do it on the platform of perfection. You do it from the platform of fallenness. Uh, um, the best way to put it is uh, um, the same way we're judged, and we're we're not told not to judge. We're taught how to judge. You're told to remove the telephone pole from your eye. Then you can help your brother remove the splinter in his. So even with your child, your level of repentance regarding what you've done opens the avenue 
to introduce the righteousness necessary for them to walk in in virtuous virginity. So those are things uh, as dads we can we can talk to our daughters about. And let me see who's on the line. Oh my goodness, let me see who's on. The, oh, speaking of the conversation last week, the man who brought it up, brother guy. What's up, brother guy? Hey, brother Jay, what's going on? How you doing? <laughs> Oh man, I am excited to be alive. I'm, I'm going to read off the, the the rest of the ten, and we're going to hop right into it. Um, we, you know, okay. we talked we, we talked about the first three: love unconditionally, create the avenue of communication uh, where they can they talk to you respectfully, but talk to you about anything and everything, but make sure it's respectful. Um, and then the third one is to uphold the three V's: virtue, value, and virginity. Um, now the, the 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 next one, um, you know we 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 always want our children, um, we always want our children to to know, and I'm in the wrong page, so let me go to the right one, <laughs> um, that they should be wise, and observant, and not thrill seeking. That's especially the thrill seeking part, uh, as. Uh, fathers, we know the excitement as you start to change, as you go through puberty. We know what it feels like as a boy, but as a girl, it, it, the the mentality right now is really not that different. There's the curiosity, the, especially the curiosity to experiment in a dangerous way sometimes. Um, you have, we have the vaping going on. We have, uh, 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 of course, we talked about sex with the virginity part. We, there's, there's, there's so many uh, temptations. Uh, virtual, um, uh, 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 health-wise, regarding uh, drugs and what have you, that they will be tempted to partake in. But we want them to understand that wisdom is important and it's an heirloom that we want to pass down in the family, that we want them to be observant. And being observant is a very important part of appreciation. We like to say that appreciation is three things. Appreciation is thankfulness. Appreciation is awareness and appreciation is an increase in value. The center, the, the second one, the awareness part. We want our, ch- our children to be aware, which means we want to speak to them the things that have happened in the past, so they're aware of what happens in the past, so they don't repeat the errors of the past. We want them to speak to them the hopes of the future, but we also want to be clear about what's happening today, so that we, uh, they can have insight on what is happening today. Uh, but we don't want them to be thrill-seeking. we got to let them know this. Sometimes there's an undertone that uh, righteousness is boring. Righteousness, righteousness is not boring. Righteousness, uh, 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 the safety of righteousness is not boring. It's only boring when, uh, when, may, when uh, uh, things that are not right are made to seem tantalizing and safer than they are when they really aren't. Uh, you want to chime in on that? Yeah. Uh, well, one of one of the things that, uh, well, you know, as as teenagers, we all as as teenagers, we, uh, you know, our curiosity does, you know, kill the cat, so to speak. Um, and and that that goes for every generation of, of teenagers. Uh, one of the reasons why is because you know we're driven by our by our emotions. So what happens is whatever's driving us makes us do what we do. Because our emotions attach to our emotions, so it's a it's a direct connection. So you know, young women in, in versus young men, you know, tend to have the you know, especially if they clicked up, you know that you know girls are girls will have their certain click and say, hey, this is the happening, this is going on, you need to do it too. Same thing with boys, same same old same old. It, it, these generations the same same thing, but if they understand the consequences that's behind it. The consequences that come because every every yin is a yang. That's just how it is. There's going to be consequences to everything in life. If they have a, a better understanding of that, they can overstand on that. Because again, we as parents, we can we can do two things. We can we can um, uh, increase our value into them, and or we can lay down the law. Now we come from a, we come from a generation that you know our parents laid down the law, you know what I'm saying. But at the same time, our, our parents' generation is like the one of the biggest hypocrites on the planet Earth, 
So laying down the law didn't really work. You know what I'm saying? But if you instill the value in them, you know what I'm saying? And then you, you know, you know, a, a bit by bit, they ha- they're gonna have to experience life on their own to say, okay, is this just the right thing? I think in the past, you you always talked about um, integrity. You know, what I'm saying yes. teaching your kids integrity. One of the things with my, with my kids, I always talk about being vigilant. You know, what I'm saying so that's being aware, being vigilant of everything, being vigilant of your surroundings at all times. So. Not not just because danger can approach, but there's all types of danger. There's a danger that comes with a smile. You know, you were just talking about vaping and stuff like that. A lot of that stuff comes with a smile. You know, that stuff, you know, they got flavors in bubble gum and vapor. You know, bubble gum. Now, what, now you know who they target that to if it's a bubble gum. Flavor. What grown man or woman needs to have bubble gum flavored tobacco? Like, really? So that's, that's geared to our team. You already know that. So again, if they're yeah. vigilant and and you you give them those those values to hold on to, where they can use that that right or wrong, of knowing what's what's integrity. And again, like you like you said earlier, uh, as that they can come to you at all times at any time about anything respectfully, and that's that's a that's a big key. And, and raising teenagers because if they don't feel they can be open with their parents, they're just they they seek whatever wisdom from their peers, and their peers have no wisdom at all. Right, uh, and, and uh, that you know there, there's there's cultural pressure, there's um, uh, entertainment pressures, the expectations, the unwritten rules of expectations um, uh, in, in the with, with their peer group, peer pressure. Um, there's so many pressures that they they go through, uh, and, and mm-hmm. they're changing physically. They're changing physiologically. They're changing uh, uh, um, uh, mentally, and uh, you want to unlock um, the, the, the 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 closeness because sometimes it becomes a a, a generational uh, 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 one generation versus the other mentality. What unlocks that is not trying to be the super cool dad by asking the quality questions. Mm-hmm. Ask them to teach you about the, the social ills that they, that, that they, that they face. I, you, go to your, your, your daughter, your teenage daughter, and say, you know what, what have you, you've, heard, you've heard of this vaping stuff? What is it? You may know already, but you want to know what they know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's about being able to fill in the gaps. We want them to be wise and observant. Well, part of their wisdom and observation will come from the question, the internal question, and sometimes the internal question is not already there, and and sometimes we have to plant the seed of the internal question so that they re- they recognize righteousness is not boring, righteousness is safe, righteousness or, or is even, peace, or, or even just having a, a regular conversation with them. The one thing that parents have to learn how to do is have a regular conversation. With their children, you get what I'm saying? Exactly. It's like, you, yeah. you know, like you have these commercials on on television. Is a, is a commercial that actually deal with um, um, they protesting the whole vaping thing. So that's a perfect opportunity. You, you, your teens are watching television. You're gonna be watching the program and say that commercial right. come on. Instead of saying, instead of uh, of just um, uh, probing them, you just have a regular. Mm-hmm conversation with them about it that conversation right. can lead to more conversation and you and they are open up to you because you had a conversation with them that that had no judgment to it it just had an open conversation and then they'd be more willing to talk to you about it but if you if you approach it in a probing matter they they may feel that they have to hide something because again we got we got to remember when you're thir- when you turn 13 years old you are all set in your ways Thirteen is the age right. when you're now setting your ways. Your ego has set you in your ways now. You have you have found your your ego, which we call a personality. So you're now setting your ways now to do to do what you don't. So so that is so as a parent, if you if, if, if plus like you said earlier, they their bodies are physically changing. So you set your ways and your bodies are physically changing. That is that's enough to drive you crazy in in itself. So. If, right. As a parent, if you just 
straight up be open, just just regular conversation, just regular, you know what I'm saying, not a right. probing style, regular conversation, I guarantee you they'll open up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And and, 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 and that goes to, that leads right to the next one, but, um, and it works both ways. Uh, you want to l- listen more, talk less, but this is what you want to impart to your daughter to do. You, because we all want to talk and we all want to be heard, but you want uh, uh, them, even in their conduct outside of the home, to listen more, talk less, so that when they do speak, they blow them away with wisdom. You don't want them to waste their breath on negativity. You know, uh, uh, we only get so certain amount of breaths, and every breath, in, every inhale is a blessing. So every exhale should be prayer, praise, wisdom, hope, encouragement, sighs of relief, um, uh, uh, exertion during work, uh, exercise, but, but, and, and basically most other things, uh, uh, joy, uh, but most other things are waste of breath. Most other things mm-hmm. are waste of breath. You want them to use their, their words wisely. So part of that is the normal conversation. Part of that is developing that as a norm in the home in general, <laughs> so that it's not something that you you have to say often, but to remind. <laughs> you yes. know, uh, exactly. yes, yes. Oh, we have we have brother. Before I go any further, and I, he had a little background noise. Look, uh, uh, brother Marcus. Amen. Hey, Brother Marcus, hey, how you Brother doing? Marcus, you hear me? Brother Guy, what's going on? Y'all can hear me clearly? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can hear you clearly. Yeah. Okay. Happy to be so here. I, Excited I, I, to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I hear the joy. Um, you know, we're talking, we're talking about how... Um, you know, as fathers, um, uh, well, you have a son, but let's play a game of pretend for a, a moment. Let's say you have a daughter, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Okay, um, I, I can do that. I did youth ministry for about ten years, so. Oh, so so uh, so, so, you know. so you we're right up your alley. We're right up your alley. We're right up your alley. Um, your, how would you convey? The importance of the, the very next thing, and, and, and I think we have a, a special guest that's also on the line coming right after you. Um, the culture tries to get your child to go against God and the standards set at home. How how, how do you convey that to your teenage daughter um, without? Creating a roadblock, or being avoided, or being voided, <laughs> or uh, um, how do you approach your teenage daughter um, with the warning that some of the things that you think are safe in the culture will try and get you to go against the God you serve and the righteous standards that at home. Okay, so um, one of the things I realized with dealing with my little sisters in the Lord and everything is one of the things I first, I try not to get, I try not to get, I, I just always try to, like I said, always the art of having a regular conversation so they feel comfortable, first of all, talking to me about whatever they want to talk about in teaching them the the right way without judging like you said uh you said something about judging earlier so so without coming yes. off judgmental but just teaching just planting the seed so they know and then the other part is not really getting offended when they sometimes they get in their own way and they will avoid you because they already know what you stand for. 
So I, I noticed, I was like, you know, my little sisters, and they get a little boyfriend, and they know I don't approve. I don't find, you know, I, I don't meet that one. It's like, oh, I didn't, why you didn't bring that one around? You know what I'm saying? So, but right. not not to get offended and just give them unconditional love, no matter what it is that they're going through, so that way the communication stays as open as possible. And um, and so that way, even when they do go off a little bit or do this or do that, you can always you can always uh, bring them back in as long as they they allowing you to do that. You have to have a floor with them, and where you could you know guide them, get them back on track. Yes, 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 and, yes. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Excellent, excellent points. Incredible, awesome points. Awesome points. Um, you have to be relatable. You have to be relatable. Now I'm, I'm gonna open up the. If I, I, I know who this is. What's up, Bishop? <laughs> Car- Cardinal, how you doing, man? Man, excited to be alive. Excited to be alive. Now this is something is right down your alley. <laughs> this is okay. right down okay. your alley. Okay. Uh, okay. Is the general on? Yes, from yes. Atlanta. No. Oh no no no. He's not on. They're doing some things there. Okay. They have some okay. some some things they're facilitating right now. You got it. I know time is short. Yeah. I'm looking at the clock, so yeah. I'll say it real quickly. From and this is just my experience. Uh, I have three daughters. One graduated from college, NYU. The other one's in college. And then the boss, she's 13. So <laughs> it, with my three daughters, I've learned I've learned this. Uh, and I grew up with four brothers. So having daughters or sisters or, or, or just females, it's like, oh, my gosh, where's the handbook for this one? He's been preparing me for this, God. So I learned God's got jokes. He got jokes. But daughters, they love their daddies, man. They love their daddies. Yep. For me, for me, I found out it's a dichotomy. Um, I've learned that you one, um, you talk it out, and two, you bring them out. Um, it's the communication part to talk it out, but then you, I have to follow it up with actions, and I have to bring them out for the experience. Before a man takes them out to dinner, I have to bring her out to dinner to set the example to know what to expect. So if a man does not open the door, if a young man does not pull out the chair, she knows he's got a lot of growing to do. I need not mess with him because I don't have time to pour into where I'm going to spend time pouring into him. So I try to give that experience along with the talk. And the hardest thing is let them fall. Let them fall, but be right there to help them out the whole way. So for me, talk it out but then experience it, bring them out. Powerful, yes. powerful, 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 powerful. I agree. Yes. Talk them out, bring them out. Talk it out, bring them. Wow. With with, with a, a minute and a half left, we've really only touched the surface of, of uh, where we're going with this. Um, we still have uh, the culture will try and get you to go against God. We just said that. Uh, do not follow after the New Age philosophy. Eat healthy means to have positive intake. Uh, in a world where androgyny is promoted, encourage, encourage her to be a lady at all times. Um, attitude is not strength. Instead, it reveals doubt and weakness and pettiness. Um, and then the last one is criticism or accountability without honor does not make pe- people or situations better. So we'll get into those wow. next week. We have some some, some more uh, uh, chewing on what what we just heard, um, and I'm going to ask Pastor. We have literally one minute left to pray us out real quick, and um, we'll, we'll we'll close out until next week. But um, uh, an awesome time uh, 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 talking about what we should say to our teenage daughters. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to be on air with these brothers to help us bring out what's inside of us, to help us, Lord, to build one another up, Lord, in 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 
giving guidance and education on how to raise uh, godly children in an ungodly world. We thank you for what you have just done. Help us to regurgitate this and, and move forward with this. And we thank you for this particular business, this ministry, that it continues to move forward. In the lovely name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. This is this is Further and Father, where fatherhood is elevated, families are empowered, and communities are transformed by our five core principles, honor, encouragement, accountability, reconciliation, and training. We love you. We love you. We love you. Until next week, uh, stay focused. Forgo options. Choose undistracted success. F-O-C-U-S. Have a great one. We love you, man. <laughs> 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 <laughs>